This was actually sent to me last May by a viewer, Austin. He says he works at a camp and the ponderosa pine trees died because of bark beetle. But he really liked the way the bark looked. There's no wood here. This is all bark from the tree and it's incredibly thick. It's really interesting and I really want to do something with it. But I can't work with it as is. It's just, it's too light and it's too fragile. You can see pieces are just falling off of it here. So before we get going with this project, we're going to need to stabilize this piece of wood. Normally I stabilize in this container, in this vessel here, um, but it's just not, it's not wide enough for, for this application. So instead we're going to use this larger pot over here. Uh, and I use this one to stabilize the pancake and the corn cobs, so we know it works. It's just not as cool looking because you can't actually see the sides. So even with this vessel's larger size, it's, it's still too small to fit the entirety of the bark sent to us by Austin. So we're gonna have to, um, we're gonna have to trim this piece down to size. Was kind of curious to see how much it weighed before we got started, just as a reference. So it's 738 grams. It just barely fits in there after trimming. So this is stabilizing resin. Uh, it's a little different than casting resin. Stabilizing resin is used to make soft or punky wood uh, more solid. Uh, it basically gives it rigidity. And the nice thing about stabilizing resin is you can use it over and over and over and over again. What we need to do is we need to completely cover this block with resin and all we need oh wow my weight's not strong enough and i think we're good so let's put the lid on and hook up the vacuum got our vacuum pump hooked up and what that should do is we should start seeing some bubbles And we're going to start seeing some bubbles in the tank. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That's not good. Drat. Okay, I don't know how much of this got on camera, but chaos ensued right after I turned on the pump because I totally missed something important. So this opening right here is where the air gets sucked out of the vessel. And that was below the line until I turned on the pump and all of the air bubbles started bubbling up and it started sucking in stabilizing resin in here through the line back to my vacuum pump. Uh, I turned everything off super fast and now I gotta figure out a way to do this. We've poured off stabilizing resin into these two containers. Um, Mrs. Brown came out, volunteered one of her plastic containers which we, um, I mean, just destroyed. So, sorry about that. I think I'll recover from the dollar store purchase. Um, I've tried to cram the bark into this pink vessel and it appears to be staying in there. And uh, that valve is open. So everything looks okay right now. And I think that this is shoved in here far enough that it's not going to float. Please. Do you want a scooper? What's a scooper? Like a ladle. Oh no, I, I don't actually. Oh, uh, well, so much for it not floating. Are you laughing? No, no, I wouldn't laugh at this. Okay, because I don't think this is funny. I know you don't. Like at all. I know, I know, I know. Because your cool weight won't fit now. No, it's like a stick up like yeah, way no, past the no, line. No. So now I need to figure out how to get weight on it. Okay, so we need to use the loose ones. I don't think... It looks like the same amount that you have welded together. You think so? I think, yes. That's okay. my guess. All right, well then let's... Are you going to count them to see if I'm right? No, I'm not going to. I can... <laughs> no, I wasn't going to. Now I'm going to. One, two, three. No! <laughs> okay, and I need a shallow container. Shallow. Ah, la, la, la. This is pretty shallow. No, that's not shallow enough. It's stupid. <laughs> we don't want that one. Something else. Okay, you think that's shallow enough? Well, it's shallower than yours. Whatever. 
Yeah. It is kind of nice. <laughs> Seems a little... That worked well. It's not doing anything. Huh. You don't have any more of those? I welded them all together <laughs> for convenience. You should have welded this set without a handy I didn't handle know hole. I needed it. It's something heavy. Okay, what? Don't you have iron? What? Like an iron plate? Don't you have iron plates? That would be nice. Put that on the list. What about your it's concrete? Substantial. The concrete? Yeah. Oh, that's not a bad idea. Still, yeah. still too big. It crests the top. Dang. This is hilarious. Yeah. This is, this is the easy part, everybody. For the record, why do you have a bag of silverware? Ah! You got resin on you? Yes. Dang it. Let's put it in the bowl. Okay. Just put it in the bowl. Oh. Yuck. That would have been the right weight. Yeah. yeah. Oh. No, I was thinking though yeah. that if I cut this piece, the lid will hold it down. Right, wouldn't it? All right, the vacuum pump will suck the air from here, and hopefully, this is going to work. And I don't want it to break the glass, right. so I got to trim the wood down a little bit more, don't I? I think possibly. Oh no. Nope. Oh wait. Oh no. Now it's pushing really hard against the glass. Okay. Okay. So... Should we put on safety glasses? Uh, we could have a real bad problem right here. How, how long do you let it go? Uh, do you hear any cracking? No. Neither do I. I don't want to get close enough to look, but I want Neither to... Neither do I. Give me safety glasses. They're over there. All right. Well, this is a disaster. So this has been evacuating air for eight hours and it's getting late here and I don't feel like letting it run all night long. So I'm just going to turn off the pump and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the vacuum that is what we waited eight hours for was to get as much air out of the bark as possible and replace that air with resin. So now we just let this soak in here. It's something like twice as long as you pumped from it. So we're going to let it sit in here for close to 16 hours. We're well past 16 hours now, sometime in the middle of the next day. And it doesn't appear to be floating. That is a good thing. This piece should be infused with resin. All we do is wrap it in aluminum foil, put it in the to and then we're putting it in the toaster oven, but I'm looking at it and I'm not even sure it's going to fit in there. Oh, wow, that is a tight fit. All right, so to cure the resin, we put it in the toaster oven, 220 degrees Fahrenheit for 45 minutes and then we should be all done with the beginning part. Okay, I think that's as much foil as I can get off. Um, see how this looks wet on the side? That's a good sign. That means that the resin is definitely soaked in. Uh, it doesn't feel as heavy as I was expecting it to feel, but I've never stabilized bark before. So I really don't know what's normal. Okay, 816, so a little bit. Not very much, actually. It has a really interesting look to it, but it's just breaking apart as I go. I feel like there's something, there's some potential here, but I don't know, I don't know if we're going to have any luck completing this or not. And this may or may not sound strange, but I really didn't want to do a cast resin bowl for this, but I'm not sure how to avoid it at this point. Really interesting, and I really like it, but it's just way too fragile. It's just falling apart over on the lathe. And the other thing is, if I do a cast, I'll be able to save all of this exposed edge here. 
which is something I wasn't planning on doing originally. I was planning on making this whole thing much smaller. And we're going to mix up some chill epoxy. It has 10 hours of working time, uh, which means it should allow it to get very, very clear and hopefully penetrate as much as possible. So I'm going to mix up about 20 ounces to start. Now, presumably this thing's going to float even after it's been stabilized. So I'm just going to tape it into the bowl here. Yeah, that looks good. Well, I mean, it doesn't look good, but it it seems secure. All right. It's actually pretty close to the to the rim. Yeah, that actually worked. It's actually been seven days since I put this in the pressure pot. Oh, that, wow, okay. I thought that was gonna just like release. It's gonna take me a little while to get this plastic off. You can see it's starting to separate here. And I do see that we've got a nice clear casting on the side. It is still honestly pretty soft, but um, I don't know, that's still pretty soft. I brought it in the house and I let it sit in the house nine days. I believe it is fully cured. Funny, I did the same thing last year. I did a resin project in January. No resin projects in January. I mean, that's the rule. I really like the way the outside shape is. It's very round, super roundy-ish. Um, I've got exposed bark on this side and honestly that bark is, is pretty soft. So now I'm gonna try to clean up the face. Actually, as wide as I can make this opening, you can probably see right here, this is resin shining through. So if I want to keep this edge, then I need to stop working on it. That's what we're looking for. Nice, uniform scratches. And now we can move up to the next grit. And that's 800. So these are just micromesh polishing pads. I've seen me use these before. I use these dry ones when I've got wood and resin. The inside was much softer, got a lot of tear out. I do want to put a finish on there, so I'm just going to put a light coat of wipe on polyurethane. I'm gonna put a little bit on this outside exposed section as well. No need to touch the resin part, that's well polished at this point. When this finish is all dry, I'll flip it around and take off its little temporary walnut tenon. You guys don't need to see that. You guys can jump forward to the glamour shots. There it is, it is completed. We have ponderosa pine bark, and by casting it in clear resin, we're able to capture this awesome moss growing on the bark. And there's no reason for that to ever degrade or change. I love the way the bark looks preserved and magnified in the resin. It has a very striking appearance. To me, the look of the bark 
kind of gives it a dragon scale appearance. And I love the irregular but repeating patterns that you see throughout it. You can feel the soft and harder ridges there. It's one of those things, like this is not at all what I planned on. I didn't plan on any casting resin. And then I didn't plan on the sides being this thick. We're so far away from my original vision. I'm enamored with this bowl. I, I love the way that it did come out. There's a couple times when I thought we weren't even gonna get a bowl out of this. <laughs> Thank you for watching. This pine bark bowl would not have been possible if Austin hadn't sent me this piece. And I want to thank you again, Austin, for doing that. It was a challenge. It evolved, but I'm super happy with it. And I really appreciate you sending it out to me. <laughs>